Houthis threatened to sink the 100,000-ton U.S. aircraft carrier Dwight Eisenhower in the Red Sea. The Houthis have threatened to sink the 100,000-ton U.S. aircraft carrier Dwight D. Eisenhower in the Red Sea and even claimed to have hit it with drones or missiles. These threats have caused little alarm given the disparity between the military on one side and the state-of-the-art nuclear-powered carrier and its escort fleet on the other. Forbes reports. The publication noted that the idea that the Houthis could cause real damage to an American aircraft carrier, let alone sink it, seems far-fetched and unlikely. The Houthis are the epitome of a makeshift force, relying on garage-built drones, truck-mounted missiles, and crewless kamikaze speedboats. They are extremely difficult to attack in their rugged mountain fortresses and urban retreats. But being hard to dislodge does not make them an effective offensive force, and armored warships with missile defenses and damage control systems are far harder to sink than merchant ships, the article says. According to the publication, at least 12 missile hits are needed to sink an aircraft carrier. At the same time, the Russian source Top War Media Outlet for 2019 cites an even higher figure, suggesting that one to three missiles will cause superficial damage that can be easily repaired, six to eight will cause serious damage, and at least 20 missiles will be needed to destroy them. If we follow the rules of veteran Chuck Hill, where you sink an aircraft carrier, you need to place half a kilogram of bombs or shells on the target for every ton of the ship. To sink the American carrier USS Eisenhower, you would need from 5 to 100 warheads, Forbes noted. At the same time, the article noted that the greatest risk to the ship is fire, not sinking. Based on historical data, it is known that the US Navy lost five large aircraft carriers in World War II and only one of them was sunk. It does not take a large amount of explosives to start a fire. Thus, the publication cited the example of the destroyed Russian missile cruiser Moskva. Most recently, Ukraine hit the Russian cruiser Moskva with two Neptune missiles. At over 9,000 tons, according to the cube root rule, it would have taken over 900 kilograms of explosives to sink the Moskva or about six Neptunes with 150 kilograms of warhead. Again, an uncontrolled fire broke out and some speculated that stored ammunition may have ignited. The Russian Defense Ministry said the cruiser was damaged, but it was being towed to port and sank the next day in bad weather. Given the damage the fire caused, it is possible that only one missile hit the right place to start the fire that destroyed the Moskva, the article explained. Forbes emphasize that it is not the size of the flying warhead that determines the damage, but the risk that the stored ammunition will become a self-destruct charge. The Russian army shot down of the MiG-29 aircraft belonging to the armed forces of Ukraine with Iskander missile at the Dolgensivo airfield in the Dnipropetrovsk region. The Russian Ministry of Defense released the images in this regard. Mykola Olshchuk, commander of Ukraine's Air Force said that Russian forces launched seven missiles and five loitering munitions to attack Ukraine on the morning of July 3. The enemy launched three Iskander K surface-to-surface -surface cruise missiles, four KH-59 guided missiles and five Shahid attack UAVs on the morning of July 3, 2024. They mainly targeted Dnipropetrovsk Oblast, he added. Olshchuk added that Ukrainian air defense units had shot down 11 aerial targets, one Iskander K cruise missile, four KH-59 guided missiles, five Shahid-131-136 loitering munitions and one Orlan-10 UAV. Recall, on July 1, Russia reported an Iskander attack on the Ukrainian Mirarod airfield, located about 150 kilometers from the front line. As Forbes writes, the Ukrainian Air Force deployed six Su-27 fighter jets in the open air, and a Russian missile destroyed two of them. A Russian drone spotted at least six Ukrainian Su-27 supersonic fighter jets parked in the open in broad daylight. A Russian Iskander missile fired at them destroyed two precious Su-27s and damaged the other four, the newspaper writes. As Forbes points out, this may have been one of the most expensive days for the Ukrainian Air Force since the beginning of the full-scale invasion of the Russian Federation. At the same time, 
the publication writes, the raid on Mirarod is only the latest in a series of Russian attacks on vulnerable Ukrainian air bases.